My name is Muta Bill, some might know me as Napoleon, former member of the Tupac Outlaws. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I go by the name of Abdul Rahim. I've been Muslim for like five, going on six years now. Alhamdulillah. I come from a, um, a culture and a background in the entertainment business where we really didn't have respect for too many other people around us. I grew up amongst people who were selling drugs, people who were womanizers, people who were doing fraud, making money, you know, driving big cars. Before Islam, my life was based around money, women and respect. Growing up on a council estate, these are the kind of things that we used to admire. Everyone around my area, the kind of things they used to do is like sell drugs and do robberies and stuff like that. So for as a young black person growing up in this kind of environment, these are the kind of things we just look up to. These were my these were my role models, these are the people that I aspire to be like. I come from a environment, I come from a world in the entertainment business, man, where the main thing that was on our mind was money. We come from a, a, a side of the world where we believe that money is our ultimate happiness. So therefore, you hear all types of stories where individuals would do anything to make a dollar. You hear people murder their own brothers, murder their own parents just to come up and make some money. Long story short, I re reached the age where I needed to make some money myself. I wanted the things that I used to see. You know, these people were my role models. I considered them to be my role models. You know what I mean? I had cousins that were on the strip. And for what? To find out that once you get yourself in that situation, you're still depressed. You're still not happy. Because money is not going to only bring happiness. In most cases, it brings more problems. So I was caught up in that life, man. And I was searching. And inside of me, I was dying. You know, I was looking for reasons, man, to even get somebody to murder me. Or I was looking for reasons for me to even pull out my gun and harm someone. Because I thought that the way that I can release what was inside of me, and this anger was inside of me, is basically putting this anger out on someone else by hurting them. As I got older, I started to realize that, you know what, I wanted to start making some proper money, so I started getting into certain activities, i.e. selling drugs. And as a young person, when you start making money, you think to yourself that, you know what, money's going to make you happy. So you push yourself hard to make the money. But it's until I started really making some proper money, that's when I started to realize, you know, that the money doesn't make you happy. I mean, what do you think that I was getting up to? You know what I'm saying? Young black boy living in a housing housing estate housing projects i was getting up to everything that you can think of and it landed me in prison you know it landed me in more trouble than i needed to be in subhanallah i was the way that i was living my lifestyle it was i was heading for destruction i come from a vibe man where my brothers got shot same brother from the same mother father got shot people shot up his house little cousins catching murder cases at the age of 14 years old this was a society man that you living in a society like that you either going to drown or you're going to have to get force yourself to come up out of the hood because you want to naturally want to get away from that life growing up i see a lot of my friends die around me a lot of people that i was very close with i see their life get taken around me and it used to make me think like what's gonna happen to me when i die you know i see man that i used to be proper close with used to have a lot of money when they died their wealth didn't be able to do nothing for them so it was something that used to really make me think like what's gonna happen to me when i die so i used to always think about life even though i had everything that i wanted i had money i had girls i had cars i had jewelry when i used to go rave and i used to spend mad money on champagne and all this kind of stuff but i always had it in the back of my head like what's gonna happen when i die i always used to think about this stuff and subhanallah i couldn't get no answers and it used to bring proper stress to my head because at the end of the day I felt like I had everything I wanted, but I still wasn't happy. Back then, it was nothing. Girls were nothing to me. They were an object of, of my pleasure, you know what I'm saying? If I needed to hide with strap, I leave it with the girl. If I needed to have my drugs, I'm not getting caught with it, I leave it with the girl. You know what I'm saying? If I needed someone to run up in the in the shop and do do some fraud and, and swipe me some clothes and whatnot, I send the girl in. And before women were 
an object to me. It was, I, I, I was so fascinated with this concept of love, this concept of love, this chasing every different girl, seeing if I could really achieve this, this thing once again, love. Alhamdulillah, since I've come to Islam, mashallah, girls, I started seeing them in a different light. They weren't just a use and abusing and sit there and sleep with a girl and sit there and try and find a way to get rid of her, get her out of your house as quick as you can. We definitely didn't have respect for women. You know, we used to use a woman like a commodity. We would tell a girl that basically she's a model, you know, abuser, user, put in a record, put in a video, give a couple hundred dollars, go to the next woman. We had no respect for the environment that was around us. We didn't even have respect for ourselves. The way we used to look at women, we never had no respect for women. Women, we used to violate them. They were like victims. That's what we used to do, use and abuse them. We grew up in a society where women were shown that women shouldn't have no respect. So this is the way we used to do women. What we used to do is use and abuse them. That's it. They were just there as for as an object of my pleasure, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really have that kind of respect, even though I got obviously, you know, my mother, I was raised by my aunt, you know, I had I, I got a sister. You know what I mean? This was our life. This was our life. I come from a hood, I come from a community that if you show kindness towards a woman, you consider a weak individual. So with that type of mentality being pressed upon you, man, it make you almost harsh towards the people around you, and it make you mostly harsh towards women. And you see this most of the times in the inner cities of America, that the respect that an individual is supposed to show to others around them, especially women, is gone. And even though in our communities, especially the African-American community in America, most of the young African-American males and Hispanic males are raised by women. It's only until I became Muslim, until I came to Islam, and that's when I realized that I had to respect women and I looked at women in a different way. And if I never came to the Dean of Islam, I will still look at women the way I used to look at them. I took Shahada in jail. You know what I mean? I took, I took my Shahada in prison. We had a Jummah. And, you know, I stood up and said, yeah, I want to be a Muslim. You know what I mean? They, they, I stood up and the, the Imam made me take my Shahada in front of all, all these criminals. You know what I'm saying? And then after I took my Shahada, everybody started hugging me. I, <laughs> Like in jail, that's not, you know what I mean? You don't hug a man, you know what I'm saying? But after accepting the religion of Islam, it was like a wake up call. I come to realize that the way that I was living my life was actually in opposition to where the creator of the heavens and the earth wanted me to live my life. You know, the religion of Islam, for example, the first time that I ever seen the respect of any other religion, the respect that they give a woman was through the religion of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he referred to the woman as a glass vessel. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who are best for my, my ummah are those who are best for their wives, and I'm the best of you to my wives. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to race Aisha. We come from a neighborhood, man, if a man walking down the street racing a woman and your boy see that, you in trouble. But here it is, man, this is the messenger of Allah. This is the men, this is a man, this is a man, this is a real man. But look at the kindness that he shows a woman. When Islam truly came, I realized the worthlessness of everything else. Like, everything that we seem to think about means nothing. Everything in this dunya really means nothing because what we forget is that when we die, we're going somewhere. Um, the last same time, the dean came to me and I had to make a choice, either the rap thing and the role thing or Islam. And I chose Islam, so this is where I am today. So when I started to read that, man, it kind of gave me a wake-up call that the way that I was living my life was wrong. You know, Allah says in the Quran, many, many, many narrations in our book, I mean, many ayats in our Quran and our book that we don't oppress no one, that we don't oppress the woman. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was Wasallam was asked who have the rights over a human being after the, after the creator of the heavens and the earth. The Prophet Sallallahu was Wasallam said the mother three times and then the father. So this is proof, man, that the religion of Islam it's not a religion that oppress women because you have many onslaughts from the media you have many ignorant Muslims that might oppress a woman but the religion of Islam opposed and that, that follow the Quran and the Sunnah would be kind to his women Islam has brought my my my, my um, it's made me more responsible you know what I'm saying as an individual I take more responsibility for my actions whereas before I would always compromise my, 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 the consequences of my actions. So if I was gonna go and do something I wasn't supposed to do, knowing full well I can be put in prison for it or whatnot, I would compromise it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but now, 
I know that my accountability is with the Creator. Also, the religion Islam teaches us that we don't oppress anyone, whether he be a Jew, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, we don't oppress an individual. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Beware of oppression, because there is no barrier between the one who's getting oppressed and his Lord. So if he make dua against you, the dua will be answered. For example, you got the story when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Taif, and he went to seek refuge and get a, a tribe to protect them and aid them. And the, the people of Trife, even the youth in Taif, stoned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the point that blood was dripping in his sandals. Two angels were sent to the Messenger of Allah, and they said, we, we are sent from your Lord, and if you want, we will make sure that the two mountains surrounding Taif crush the village of Taif, crush the people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, perhaps from their loins in the future they will be Muslim. So this is proof that Allah says in the Quran that the Prophet was a mercy to mankind. Islam taught me how to be a human being. You know, smile when you greet a brother, you know what I'm saying? Sh show love, you know what I mean? Because out here, before Islam, it's, it's like you lose that. You lose you lose your sense of being a human. You just become an animal, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and your objective is just to eat, that's it. It's like, what hasn't Islam done for me? It's like the sweetness of Islam, wallahi, there's nothing else like it. The sweetness of Islam. It's every single thought process, every single thing, every single movement now has a new purpose, has a true meaning behind it. I am here for no other purpose but to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Allah. That is the sole purpose for me to be in this dunya. I swear by Allah, I want to give up every single day of my jihad for one day in Islam. My heart was hard. I had to, my heart had to be hard. I never had no emotions, you know what I'm saying? The only reason, the only reason why a tear would come down on my eye is because of pain, man. You know what I mean? Islam, relationship with my family, relationship with myself, learn some manners, and also I started to understand the responsibilities of life. So with the advice we want to give out to the Muslims, man, that this religion of Islam is a mercy to mankind. This is a religion where the Prophet Wasallam said a prostitute was forgiven her sins and got entered into Jannah because she gave a thirsty dog water. So what about the way we're supposed to deal with other individuals, man? It's a religion that we should, uh, we should behave and, and, and live a characteristic and live a life that the religion of Islam calls us to. And what the religion of Islam calls to is uprighteousness in every single thing we do. Next advice I'd like to give to Muslims regarding the deen. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't have to guide you to Islam. So it's a blessing, it's a na'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you to the deen. So take these blessings and follow Allah's command and follow his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of your ability. Because if you look in the society we're living at, so many people are misguided. And you have to praise Allah because Allah didn't have to guide you. So when the Muslim walk outside of the door, we shouldn't have the neighbors afraid of us. We should make the neighbors say, man, I'm glad that I live next door to a Muslim because I know that this is an individual who's not going to oppress me. This is an individual that fears his Lord. He's not going to do anything that I have to be afraid of. Because the Prophet wasallam said, if you have a, a neighbor and that neighbor is afraid of your harm, even afraid of your harm, you will not smell Jannah. If you're looking into Islam, just be objective and be open-minded. You know what I'm saying? And, and reflect on your purpose of why you're here. So the religion of Islam calls it to the uprightness of mankind. And this is why you have many, you, you, I think the brothers out here, they call it the road. We call it the street, we call it the hood, but they call it road. You have many brothers from the road side to Islam that before prior to the religion of Islam, that they were some of the worst people in their communities. Some of the worst murderers or gangsters or drug dealers. And when they accept the religion of Islam, you would have never believed that they come from that life. My advice to non-Muslims regarding Islam is don't look at what the media says. If you want to find out about Islam, look at the sources, look at the Quran, look at the Sunnah, read up, look, research Islam properly. Don't look, don't look at what you see in the media because you know they try to proclaim and push Islam in a bad way in the media. So if you want to make your own judgment about the religion, look at the look at the religion for itself, not what individuals do or what the media pushes. So you know what I mean? We want to make dua. We want the brothers to continue to give this call to the religion of Islam, man, that it reach all around the world, especially our brothers and sisters that's on the corner oppressing themselves. Man, if you want happiness, if you want success in your life, if you want honor, just submit to your creator. And submitting to your creator is accepting the religion of Islam and living your life like a Muslim. And wallahi, like Allah says in the Quran, if you live your life as a Muslim, Allah will make you have an easy, easy, successful life, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah